Hey everyone, today I'm going to build a chatbot using Google's uh, Gemini Pro uh, large language model as the back end and Streamline as a front end. This will be very quick. It's maybe 20 lines of code. It actually goes pretty pretty fast, but I want to walk you through it. So the first thing you'll need to, to do this project is an API key for uh, the Gemini LLM. So um, you do need to um, have a Google Cloud uh, platform account. So log in with that. And then if you go to makersuite.google.com slash app slash API key, you can create a key and a project at the same time from here. I already did that. So I have a, a, uh, a key already created, which you can sort of see the, the ending digits here. And I put that into the environment on my Mac. So you won't see that in the project, but you'll see me reference that in the uh, operating system uh, reference. So I'll pull it in from the environment. But this is a prere prerequisite. So make sure you have that. Um, and the next thing, I'll, I'm actually going to start with a new environment from scratch, so um, so I don't have any anything up my sleeve, I had nothing pre-installed. So I'll, I'll create a new environment with uh, Anaconda. I'm going to call this uh, test bot. So that's what we'll call this bot. Great. Okay, let's open a new terminal in that environment. Change my repos folder. Now let me make this bigger so you can see it better. And we'll just make that full screen. Uh, we'll call it testbot, go into that folder, and I'm going to go ahead and, and install these uh, dependencies we need. So pip install um, streamlet. And then pip install Google Generative AI. Okay, that'll get those into the environment. So when we create the app, it'll have those already. Clear that. And then nothing in here yet. So I'm going to run uh, Visual Studio Code. And create a uh, main py file to run the Streamlit app. Uh, let's see, we are in Testbot Conda already. So that's fine. Okay, we've got some imports, so import uh, OS, so I'm going to need my key, import um, Stringlet as ST, and nope, a little too smart there. There we go. Import, this is going to be google.generativeai as genai. Nope, too smart. Then I'll initialize the generative AI model. I won't type this all out. We'll just paste that in. So this line is just configuring the uh, Gen AI, oops, Gen AI. So this will configure the generative AI client with my key that I'll, I'll get from the uh, from my environment variable. So I put that environment variable with uh, ZHS, ZSH, and uh, so that's available. And then model creates a reference to the SDK that we'll use to access Gemini. And the next thing I'm going to do is a chatbot should have a session state, so it should remember previous parts of the conversation. So those can be added to the context during next calls. This is uh, one thing I really like about the way that Gemini is implemented is that it has this um, uh, model that you can create. So you can start a chat model which stores session state and it will automatically take the conversation and put that into the context when it sends it back to, um, to the LLM. So it's kind of like Langchain has some middleware that does this as well, but they built it into the client, which I really, really like. So that'll create that object. And next, we're going to start laying out the Streamlit UI. So this is the form title here. So it's going to have a title that just says chat with Google Gemini Pro. So that's just a static string on the top of the page just to make it look nice. Below that, we'll just have a list of the previous parts of the conversation. So that uh, uh, chat history that we have here that we created in the Streamlit session state called chat. Um, we're going to iterate over that and over the history that's in that and display it to the user. So you'll see what that looks like at the end. So I created this helper function. Um, let me add that in here because we'll need that. Essentially, this is because Streamlit says that Streamlit thinks that uh, an assistant in the chat history is called uh, assistant, and Google thinks that an assistant should be called model. So this just kind of translates that, um, and it's just sort of to make the visual work better for Streamlit. So don't worry too much about it. If you didn't even do this, it wouldn't matter. And the next piece of code is to accept the next input from the user. So the way Streamlit does that is it has a um, actually a special routine that does that called chat input. So it prompts the user with this prompt and then um, this colon equal um, once the user enters their 
input, it will assign it to a variable called prompt. And then the if is true once the user actually does that. So this will be true when we get a new prompt entry from the user. And of course, we want to display the prompt that the user actually uh, entered as part of a conversation flow. Now that we've displayed what the user has actually printed in on the UI, we're going to send that back to Google Gemini to process and send us a response. So remember within the session state, we had this chat object, which is a model.startChat created that. So that's like a chat object. And that chat object has a method called send message. And that will both add that history to the list of history as well as send the prompt back to the LLM. So there's a lot going on in this single line of code, but this will essentially send the prompt to the LLM, add it to the history, and wait for the response to come back from Gemini, assign that to this response variable. And having that response, we'll go ahead and print out what the, what the response was from the assistant. And that's that text there. And then the way Streamlit works is since the, the overall session has been updated, it'll, it'll re-render what that chatbot actually looks like. And then to run that, we use Streamlit command, Streamlit run. And main.py is the name of the file that we just created. And that will launch in a web browser. You can kind of see the layout that we just created. So let me put this side by side so that you can see it a little bit easier. So we can look at the code next to the output so you can understand how it works. There we go. All right, make that a little bit bigger. Great, perfect. Okay, so here's our title here, which we created here. There's the title. And then the input box down here, I possess evolved knowledge, etc. That's this line here. So now it's got the input box out and it's waiting for us to enter something. It will assign that to prompt, display it on the screen immediately, send the response back to Google Gemini. And once that comes back, it'll display the, the output as well as this will re-render to display the history. So let's just try it out. So we'll say, um, who was the first president of the US? And it says George Washington, very you know low latency. It comes back pretty quick. So it was George Washington. That is the correct answer. So we'll say, and the, I don't know what, 16th, right? So that should be Lincoln. Lincoln. Um, now here's an interesting thing. So we'll say, and the 47th. Now, if you know your presidents, you know that there hasn't been a 47th yet. And it says Joe Biden. Um, I don't know if that's a prediction, but there he's not the 47th president. How about the 134th? Aha, it finally figured out there are only 46. So you can see there's some hallucination going on in here, so be careful. Yeah, let's have it do something else. We'll say uh, tell a joke, joke about uh, database administrators. Oops, administrators. Oh, well, I told us a lot of jokes. Why did the DBA get a degree in music so he could learn to compose himself? Uh, that's not really that funny, is it? Uh, what do you call a DBA who's always on vacation of foreign key? Eh, okay, whatever. All right, and let's say, um, how do I, uh, how do I, um, uh, let's try a code one. How do I iterate over a strings in Python. So these are taking a little bit longer to do, but okay, that's a very long response. Using a for loop, yeah. Okay, using the enumerate, oh, it gave us like every possible way. And then how about in C++, Let's see if it knows that. Um, yeah, these are also correct. So, so very cool. Um, so that's our chatbot. That's pretty much it. Um, you can see in 28 lines of code, we created this whole thing and we kind of leveraged some, some good built-in capabilities in Gemini, um, with not only its ability to process, um, uh, uh, uh generative AI responses and, uh, but also it's uh, chat history maintenance. So this, that made this very, very easy. Um, so that's it. I hope that was interesting, or at least you learned something, and I'll see you next time.